Hey, this is James. Uh, today I'm going to follow on from last week's video about the morph tool. So I'm going to grab the morph and just like last week I'm going to modify the uncut pen just so it's a little bit darker. Okay, And I'm going to model in 3D. So I'm going to use the box method and I'm just going to make a couple of boxes just by eye. Uh, actually, I'll make one and then I'll drag a copy. So I'm just going to drag a copy of this. Uh, we can get drag a copy. I'm just using the shortcut, but we can use drag a copy uh, for here. Drag a copy. Okay, so now that I've got a copy, I'm going to place a hole into this. So first off, I'm going to uh, use a box method to create a hole. So I'm going to select the morph. And I'm just going to click on the surface and from the pet palette, I'm going to use the pencil icon. And with the box method selected, I'm just going to draw a 2D shape first. And then I'm going to extend that shape through the uh, depth of this, uh, of this box. So if it's the exact same depth, depth, then it will actually create a hole. So let's try that again, but actually go further. So I'm going to create another box here. And instead of stopping on the outside face, I'm going to keep going. And you'll notice that what it will do is create a hole, but it will actually create more geometry on the other side. So we could uh, remove this afterwards, but just to show you kind of what happens uh, in this case. Okay, so this is the first method. So I'm going to move to the other box. And I might just make a copy of this one. Okay, so that's one method by using the uh, extruded box by drawing that onto the surface. So the other method is using the 2D and just drawing a 2D uh, box uh, rectangle on this surface. So I'm using the pencil again on the selected morph. And now that I've uh, divided this face, I'm going to click inside this rectangle, use the push-pull, and do the same. So snap to the other side of this uh, box. So it's the exact same thing as the box, just with uh, an extra step. Okay, so that's another hole. Okay, but what if I want a circular hole? So again, I'll just make a copy of this one. But what if I want to place the circle directly in the center uh, of this face? So I'll select the uh, morph here and I'm going to use the snap points and snap guides to help me. So I'm going to hover over one point one, and on the diagonal corner I'm going to hover over the corner to create another point. And now it's created a line between those two points. And because that's a line, it actually has a snap point in the center. So I'm going to just switch this to circle, so with center point. And I click in the center of this line. Make sure that I'm using the pencil again. And if my editing plane is not quite right, what I can do is change to vertical. And if I switch again, then it will turn to the correct face. Uh, I can also move outside of the box and uh, it will usually uh, work better. So now that I've found the center point, so I want this to be just a, a meter radius. A meter, enter, and then how far do I want to uh, revolve this circle? So then I'll say 360, and now we have divided this face with a circle at the center point. So just like the rectangle here, I just need to click on this face, use the push-pull, and then I need to push that in uh, and connect snap to the other side. And now that is a circular hole. Okay, so there's another couple of methods what we can do. Uh, the other one is what I can do instead of selecting this morph, I can just start drawing a circle and then get this circle and then do a push-pull. Actually, so this is a, actually a separate element, so I can push-pull this uh, 
as far as I want, and also on both ends. So here we've actually got two morph elements. So my original box and the new morph that I've just drawn on the face and extruded it using the push-pull uh, technique. So now that we have two morph elements, so this didn't uh, uh, cut into the morph um, when I first drew it because I didn't select this, uh, I didn't select this morph and I didn't choose the pencil so I wasn't drawing directly on the face. I was drawing a second morph on the face. So now that we've got these two morph elements, I'm going to select both. And in my context menu, I'm going to go Boolean operations and choose subtract. And depending on which, so one of them will be red and one will be blue. So the red one will be deleted and the blue one will be kept. So I have to click on the one I want to keep. So it turns blue, click, and it will delete the other one and then subtract that shape uh, from the clicked element. So this is using the uh, Boolean operations, which are different to the solid element operations because this is a permanent um, subtraction. So let's have a look at then uh, one more method. Uh, I won't show the solid element operations because I've shown this in some other ones. So I'm just going to draw another box. Roughly the same sort of proportions. And in this case, what I'm going to do is get a beam. And I'm going to turn this to a circular beam. And I'm going to make this, uh, say, 2 meters. So it's much, much bigger. And I'm going to draw a beam from one side to the other. So here I can see that I have a beam. So I'm just going to... Uh, Extend this a little bit further so you can see it. I'm stretching the length. So I've just drawn a circular beam. Just move this down a little bit. Okay. So what we can do is select both the beam, whichever shape it might be, and the morph element. And in this case, I'm going to instead not use Boolean because this will only work between morph and morph. But I'm going to use the connect command and I'm going to use the merge elements. So what would that I've shown this in a, another video. So what this will do is actually use the priority based connection strength of each material. So currently the beam is weaker. So actually the morph is cutting the beam, but I want it the other way around. So I need to make the beam stronger. So I think if I choose something like steel structural, then that should be stronger. Okay, so that looks right. So if I just select this morph and choose show selection marquee, so it'll hide everything else. Now you can see that the beam is cutting through this morph element using priority based connections. So I'm going to then show uh, all. And what I'm going to do is open up this beam and I'm just going to turn it the overrides of the model just to glass so we can see this uh, a little bit easier in 3D so I'm going to use glass so the strength is still steel but the override of the material on the outside uh, is just using glass so we'll go okay just so you can see a little bit easier so this element we would want to hide and I think this is better than using uh, solid element operations so therefore if I move this then the whole uh, because uh, it's using a connection, so it's like between um, a slab and a wall, for example. So here you can see the merge um, action occurring. So that's a few methods of how to get a hole uh, into a morph element or to be able to cut um, into a morph element. So I hope this was kind of useful and a few different methods. So how to get a rectangle, how to get a circle, and how to use then a native um, or a beam element or a column element. It, so it could be sort of any construction element uh, using the merge command. So it's a live then connection. So this one would have to hide uh, if we don't want this visible. So hopefully you learned something and until next week, thanks.